Hello, Augies everywhere. This is Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, answering your questions about ham radio. MFJ sent me their MFJ 1846 six band hex beep antenna to uh, evaluate, and it comes in a very big box. And this is a time lapse photo of me putting things together. Let's talk about how a hex beam works. This is a hex beam. The term hex comes from the fact that there are six cross pieces like this. Okay, now let's take a band, say 20 meters, and we're looking down at this thing. We'll put a driven element along here and back to about there on either side. Okay. And then a reflector element that will go from here to here to here to here to just a little bit over here. Okay, now this is the reflector and this is the driven element. So the direction of propagation is this way, all right? And you have a little bit of gain because you've got basically a two element beam. Now, sometimes people are tempted to call these spider beams and in fact there is a, a product that has that as the trade name. Of course we see six legs here, a spider has eight. So I guess we could call this a mosquito beam. Okay. Now, other bands come inside of here. Like that. But now notice that they're all crossing each other up here. So what we would like to do, instead of having a flat beam with wires in like this, what we're going to do is bend up these beams. We'll put a hub in the middle and then just bend these beams up like this. Okay, these are the arms from here, here, to here, and here, okay? and we've got something that keeps these tight. I'll just uh, draw it over here. Now let's look, I know green is a hard color for some people but I'm going to do this one in green. Here now if I have a feeder in the middle I can send out one over to here and it goes all the way around at that height where I could put, well let's use pink here, another one here and this talks to the, the feeder mechanism comes out over here and goes all the way around in here. So what we see is that we have these different beams stacked on top of each other with a common feeding element in the middle and then the coax connects here and there's a bunch of ferrite beads here to provide a choke ballon so that this can be fed with unbalanced line at 50 ohms gets here to balance to 50 ohms and then feeds all of these so there's a pole right in here that goes up here it's called the feed pole Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to first assemble um, the arms individually with all the little hooks that hold the wires 
and these wires run through so there's a little uh, socket for each there okay and then we've got the feed pole in the middle and then we'll put each individual antenna in which are above each other in layers we're starting with the hub that goes in the middle and uh, there are a lot of surprises about the way this thing is constructed uh, there are six arms um, it some people call beams like this spider beams spider beam is actually a brand name for a specific uh, hex beam which this is not it uh, this is the mfj hex beam and there i've completed the uh, uh, part that holds the various poles this has only six poles by the way spiders have eight legs so we'll call this the uh, oh i don't know the firefly uh <laughs> the fire five beam antenna um what i'm doing now is each arm has to have um several uh little connectors on there where you slide the antenna elements around and i decided that instead of doing each one to completion i would do this in an assembly line fashion which worked much better because i was repeating myself uh, six times for the one half and uh, six times for the other half these are little uh, loops put on there that the actual antenna elements can slide through as the wind blows the elements around so you can see I'm working now on the uh, thicker of the poles now these are plastic spreaders and now we're connecting the uh, two together the thinner arm with the thicker arm they fit right into each other and a screw holds them in place it's a, a, a pretty nicely done little thing okay I took all those outside now we're going to construct the feed point I ran into a problem with the feed point there was a hole that was supposed to be drilled that was not there I'll show you how I coped with that uh, later now that um, one piece of plastic pipe is the mast and that has to fit through all those loops the instructions say basically to finesse getting it through the loops I ended up uh, actually having to go to a, uh, a somewhat different approach I got rid of the box there you can just see it outside I used the Dremel tool to um, make those loops bigger so that I could put that mass through it here you see me doing the Dremel tool uh, with all of the the little hooks and now I've got it on the mast so we're just about ready now I have to put a couple little pieces together now these are the strings that hold the uh, hold the uh, uh, plastic arms up and they all have to be measured precisely they're 129 inches long uh, it tells you how long to cut it and you fold it back three inches on either end and when I'm not in the frame here I'm having my wife help me with uh, the cutting so I, I've got to tell you something about that cord use precautions because it will tangle in a heartbeat which it did for me a number of times so uh, it's a little tedious to put all of these things together uh, but when you do them right and do them carefully then the antenna is very symmetric as mine ended up being okay we're just about getting done we're putting on little uh, nylon screws on the end of that which will go into the end of the pole and pull it back there's uh, a lot on this antenna that's just held in place by the tension of the wires um, which I, I think maybe could be done a little better and there, that's where that uh, feed tube fits in so let's go outside and add uh, the poles and you see they stick out straight and we get them all in place there and they're screwed in place so they'll stay there and then the next thing to do is to untangle uh, all the the plastic and then you insert them in there and you see that pulls those 
poles up into a sort of upside down umbrella configuration and this is uh, what we're going to attach uh, wires to that particular piece right there uh, holds a dimension while uh, all of the other pieces have wires strung between them that holds the dimensions and that happens to be in the direction of the driven element uh, this is a friend, uh, Mike Bergman, who uh, came out and asked me uh, if that was the easy way to do it. And I says, no, the instructions talk about putting in like a two-foot mast so you can put the thing up on it and uh, swing that around and put the wires on. So I put in the six meter wire and then going to the 10 meter wire, um, I had to run down to Home Depot to get a hose clamp. Um, I'm going to show you here just what my workaround looked like. Um, the one on the right is the way it's supposed to be for all of them. The one on the left, you see I've used a hose clamp to just attach it there. So now that I've done that, this is uh, the next morning and I'm finishing up the wiring and uh, very soon we'll have this thing wired. And as soon as it's wired, you know, getting all the wires in place, there, there are six, of course, for 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6 meters. So it covers all of them. Uh, the antenna is a beam it does promise about 5 dBi gain and uh, that's about 3 dB over a dipole so the next step is to get a mast and put the thing up I don't have a mast for it but you can see in this picture it's uh, lying on the ground with a mast that I was going to use that proved to be too small I've located a good mast. I'm going to find somebody who will loan me a 20-foot trailer, and I'll go get that mast, and we'll get this thing put up. So please remember to click like and subscribe, and uh, you can go to the tip jar at www.dcastler.com support. Uh, the tip jar is there. Patreon is there. Uh, also some cool uh, links on Amazon to things you might be interested in. And uh, until we meet again, 73.